Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sam. Today we're going to go over one of the most popular programs for Pixar and game development, Asprite. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more, don't forget to hit subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified for new videos. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, and if you want to request a future tutorial, just leave a comment. If you haven't joined the server already, the link is in the description below. If you're looking for a program to handle pixel art, you've most likely come to Asprite in your search for answers. A lot of people say that Asprite is the go-to program for pixel art, and at only $20, Asprite is a powerhouse for its price. You can purchase Asprite directly from their website or buy it through Steam. Asprite is used to create animated sprites and pixel art. Sprites are pixel art images usually used in video games. Take a look at Pokemon Red or Super Mario Brothers, for example. Each frame of the animation or the character can be considered a sprite and are usually stored on a sprite sheet. A sprite does a great job handling these different sprite sheets and can make managing them a lot easier. First, we'll go over some simple navigation. Let's start off by opening the program and clicking on New File. Here we can choose the width and height of our image, and if our image is RGBA, grayscale, or indexed. We can also choose the background and if it's transparent, white, or black. If we decided to check the, the box Advanced Options, we can change the aspect ratio of our pixels. For now, let's just do the basics. We'll use a 256 by 256 image with RGBA set as the color mode. I like to leave my background as transparent because we can always set a layer with a different color as the background later. When Asprite creates the image, we can also choose our palette of colors on the left. Asprite has great palette options, so let's choose one now. I usually like to use DB32, Game Boy, or Google UI. Once you click on the palette you want to use, you can click load and then click the folder icon to close the box. If we want to zoom in on our image, we can use our scrolling wheel on our mouse. We can click our scrolling wheel in to pan around the canvas and use space or any other mouse buttons. Let's familiarize ourselves with some of the tools in Asprite. We'll go over more tools in a later video. The pencil tool is probably your most used tool in Asprite. The pencil tool allows you to draw on the canvas in Asprite. You can get to it by selecting the pencil on the right hierarchy of tools or by using its keyboard shortcut by pressing B. We can also change the size of the tool in the top options or by using control and scroll wheel. If we scroll down, it will make the size of the tool we are using bigger. If we scroll up, it will make it smaller. We can also use two colors at once with the pencil tool. This allows for much faster drawing if you are using multiple colors. You can also use the right mouse button as an eraser. To change the colors of the pencil tool and use the right mouse button as an eraser, we go to the bottom left of Asprite where we have two color options available to, to us. We can simply change either of these to whatever color we like. If we want to use one as an eraser, we simply click on the color we want to change and click on mask, ensuring that no color is selected. We can then use these colors wherever we would like to draw on the canvas or use it as an eraser tool so we don't have to keep switching over the official eraser tool. We also have several options up top, like Pixel Perfect. Enabling this function, you are able to draw much more cleanly. It removes a lot of unnecessary pixels and only keeps what is necessary. We also have a symmetry function where it allows you to draw symmetrically, either vertically or horizontally. You can also move the symmetry line indicated in blue by clicking and dragging this white box that is attached. Using the line tool, we can make straight and curved lines. Let's go over the standard line tool. You can select it by choosing it in the hierarchy on the right or by using the keyboard shortcut L. 
Once we have our line tool selected, we can draw straight clean lines anywhere we want to on the canvas. If we hold down shift while we use the line tool, we can snap the lines to perfect angles so that it is never jagged or weird or anyway. If we hold control while using the line tool, we can draw lines from the middle outwards, which comes in handy. We can also do both of these options at the same time. Using the curved line tool, which we can get in the right hierarchy of tools next to the line tool, or by pressing shift plus L, we can draw curved lines now. Once we draw the lines, we then have the option to curve it at two different points. If we just want one curve, just double click once you make the line. On the right hierarchy of tools, we also have the shapes tool. By either clicking them through the hierarchy or by pressing U for rectangle tools and shift plus U for eclipse tools. You can also press those again to cycle through empty or filled rectangles or eclipses. We can also use control or shift here to achieve the same results as our line tools. Our eraser tool works the same way our pencil tool works, and we can select it by choosing the tool in the right hierarchy or by using the keyboard shortcut E. It also has a nice feature where it uses the right bottom to replace your foreground color with your background color. The paint bucket tool is a solid tool in the A Sprite arsenal. We can again select it from the hierarchy or use the keyboard shortcut G. The tool is pretty self-explanatory, but there are some nice functions of the tool we should talk about. First off, you can use the contiguous option to allow it to replace every color on the canvas that you have used as a paint bucket. This helps when working with many large areas of different colors and when you need to change one entire color quickly. If you're new to art tools or programs, a really useful function is the layers option. And if you are used to these options, you may be wondering where the layers are. By pressing tab, we can display our layers hierarchy. Aspray also includes a timeline function, but we can get to that in the next video. For now, just look at the list going down like what I have here. If we want to change a layer's properties, all we have to do is double click the layer name box. We can change the name, the mode, and the opacity of the layer. If we click on the eye, eye icon <laughs> next to the layer, we can toggle its visibility. If we click on the lock icon, we can lock it to that layer and won't be able to move it. Okay. We can also right click the layer name and duplicate, merge down, or delete the layer. These other functions aren't as important right now, so we'll go over those later. It's also important to know the keyboard shortcut for creating a new layer and that shift plus N, which comes in handy when you want to create a new layer on the spot. Before we end the video today, we'll go over one last important thing, and that is your preferences. While there are many useful options in the preferences menu, there's one important option I would like to talk about, and that is the background. Sometimes, depending on your palette selection, some colors blend way too easily into the background. Also, sometimes we may need different sized squares for the art that we are working with. In the background tab, we can change both of these. By choosing size, we can change the size of the tiles in the background of a spray for our convenience. Also, we can change the colors so that we can easily see our palette if we have a lot of grays in our palette. You can hit the reset button to return these values to their original colors as well. That's all for this video today, everyone. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment telling us what you think, or if you want to request a tutorial video for us to do next. Look out for our upcoming tutorials where we dive into some of the most popular game building engines on the market, including Unity, Unreal, and Godot. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see those videos when they come out.
Also, if you've drawn something cool today using this tutorial, make sure to come share it with us on the server. The link is in the description. Have a great day, everyone.